Alrighty, so one of the main things that we need to be able to do in physics is physics is all about trying to mathematically represent what's happening in the real world. So we're trying to create equations that predict what will occur. We call that mathematical modelling. You will do this in senior mathematics. You will do this in senior physics. If you like engineering, guess what you do? Yep. Well, you mathematically model what happens in the real world so that when you design a bridge or when you design a building, you're not trial and error. It's not a really good idea to build a six million bridge and go, I hope this works. They need to test it over and over and over again in a series of conditions to make sure that it works. And this is where it all starts. So if you're given a series of data that looks like that, you might be asked to say, what type of relationship, what type of trend are we noticing? A linear. A linear. What's it? So how's a linear? So when you say linear trend, you throw that word around like it, it means something. What does that mean? Straight line. Straight line. Does it have to go through zero? No. No, it doesn't. But it must be of the form y equals mx plus c. Correct. So things that follow this relationship are growing by the same amount. As you increase x by an amount, y will go up by that amount. Now your data doesn't need to perfectly be in a line to be a linear trend, does it? But if I had data that looks like, and I'll go get my little red pen, if I had data that looks like that, is that fairly linear? Yeah. What a bit, oh, I'd say it's reasonably linear. It's not very precise, but it's reasonably linear. What about data that looks like that? Okay. You could argue that maybe it's got a, a very steep trend line, but it's probably not linear. An example of another data set that might, we often see students doing that and saying that's a linear trend. Would you describe that as linear? How can you tell? It's curved. It's curved. Okay, so good. Linear functions must must approximate a straight line. Does that mean that this is not a linear trend? Is that a linear trend? Yes. Then why does it look different? It's going the other way. It's going the other way, which means what? M must be? Negative. Negative. Good. So linear trend lines are characterised by a straight line and they are all in the form y equals mx plus c. Now this is important. m represents our gradient, which is our rate of change. As I increase x, how much does y change by? Now an inverse relationship, so I'll give us an example. I'll give us a positive in black and I'll give us a negative in a negative linear in red. Does it have to be of a certain vertical or does it can be horizontal? Uh, yeah. Is a linear equation horizontal? Yeah. Yep. The only thing it can't be is it can't be vertical, but it can be very, very close to vertical. Yeah. Happy with that? Yeah. Very. Good. So inverse. Inverse relationships. What does an inverse relationship mean? As x goes up, y goes down, or y goes up. Very good. So as x goes up, y goes down. So y should finish there, correct? Yeah. What happens as x goes down? Y goes up. Y goes up. Well, that could be a straight line, couldn't it? Yeah. Not quite. Not quite. Oh, it's a curved line, right? Okay, it should be a curved line. It should follow something that looks like this. The reason why the straight line doesn't work is that in an inverse relationship, without a vertical translation, let's just assume we're just on the x-axis, in an inverse relationship, you never, ever, ever should touch zero. Happy with that? Yes. And the reason is because our equation takes the form y equals a over x. Well, what? I'll give. Pick, think of a number. 
Five. Seven. Any number, doesn't matter. Think of a number. Five. 212. Now divide that number by whatever number you like to get it to zero. Five. No, you can't divide by zero. Why? Well, yeah, you can't. Oh, yeah, never mind. Okay, no, no, that's a fair point. You can. You can go extremely close. How do you go close to zero? Okay, well, put, put a number in your calculator. Get, get one divided by 0 0.00001. See what you get. Or just 0, 01. One, one divided by 0 0.001. Is it bigger or smaller? Oh, you can go one divided by like a million. One divided by, it'll get you very close to zero, but it won't be zero. But that's right. So the bigger the value of x, the closer to zero we get, but we never actually get to zero. That can be the problem where, for example, I could ask Joey to stand up here and I could say, Joey, I'll let you leave the classroom. You've just got to walk to the door, but you're only allowed to walk half the distance between here and the door. And then I'll, I'll have you get another crack. I'll let you walk again in half the distance between here and the door. You can go half the distance again, half the distance again, half the distance again. Will he ever reach the door? No, no but I'll be able to touch He'll be touching the door, he'll be walking very, very slowly, but he won't actually ever reach the door. And that's the nature of an inverse. Right. So as x goes up, y goes down? Yep. As x goes up, y goes down. Now, if you think about it from the point of view of current, so if we've got, if we're changing current and resistance, that's an inverse relationship. So as current's going up, what must our resistance be doing? Going down. If we've got a constant voltage, happy with that? Yes. And as resistance goes up, what effect's that going to have on our current? It goes down. It's going to take it down. <coughs> inverse, okay, so this is a positive, this here is a positive inverse. A negative inverse doesn't really exist in our frame of reference because a negative inverse will occur down here. Are we happy with that? Which is not what we're really looking for. So I'm not going to worry about the negative inverse, but it's of the form y equals a over x. What is a? A is What's a? Is that a value or is it a, or is it a number or is it a... What do we call a number that applies constantly? So A will be some constant multiplier. Are we clear? And quadratic. Joey has a quadratic book. Um, it's like, it's going up. So it's like a U? Yeah. Can it be the other way? Happy with that? Someone just said, can it be the other way? Yes, it can be the other way. Now it's also... It's also characterised because it will, on the other side of our turning point, it will come back up, won't it? So you need to be very careful with quadratics. Some of our relationships are quadratic, but it's often something we overuse. The form of a quadratic, I'll just give you y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. You don't need to worry about that at this point in time. Okay, if you're being asked anything with a quadratic, it'll just be asking you to identify what type of relationship it is. Nothing with the numerical values of A, B, and C. Are we clear? Yep. You will learn that down the track, but it's not, not for year 10 physics. You will, potentially being, you might be asked to deal with an inverse or with a linear equation. Are we clear? The last one I have on our sheet that I haven't got here, I'm just going to get rid of our m, y equals mx plus c. And again, this is exactly the same as a quadratic in the way that you're not going to be asked anything other to do, other than to describe the shape of the relationship is a square root. And I had a lot of people say, what's a square root function look like? What do we think? Why don't we figure it out? Let x equal 1, 2, 3, 4. Actually, let's go a bit quicker than that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. What's the highest y value we're going to get? 1, 2, 3. So when does x equal 1? Well, oh, sorry. When x equals 1, what does y equal? 1. Square root of 1 is? 
When x equals zero, what does y equal? Zero. Okay, good. When will x when will y equal two? Four. When x equals four? Yeah. When will y equal three? Nine. 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 That's a so that's gonna look something like that. Square root looks like that. So as as x gets bigger, y also gets bigger, but at a far slower rate. So that there is a square root function. And again, I won't be asking you to do anything mathematically with it, just to describe the trend, potentially.